Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and well, I just returned from a weekend trip to London, and I've gotta say, the Lego shopping experience in London, UK, is a lot better than what we have here in the States, and arguably one of the best Lego shopping experiences I've ever had. Let's just jump right into this, there's a lot to get into here. I just completely forgot how good the LEGO experience is over in the UK. Been a few years since I last went back in 2019, so I actually got to take a look with fresh eyes at all my favorite stores, even Legoland Windsor, and even take a look at some of the new stuff they've implemented since my last visit. Let's take a look and let me tell you why exactly I just love shopping for LEGO in London. Alright, so this information should hopefully be very fresh and new if you've never visited or lived in the UK. And even if you have visited or lived in the UK, hopefully I may actually be discovering something slightly new because I definitely tried to visit literally every single type of store selling LEGO they had possible. So let's just dive right into things with a bit of an overview of my LEGO shopping adventure in London and the surrounding areas. So the way London is divided up is that they have a lot of these large department stores. The department stores have full built-in groceries, they have clothing, and they usually have a pretty large LEGO section. And that's honestly where some of the most interesting LEGO related items can be found. Of course, even beyond just the department stores, they have one of the world's largest LEGO stores. Actually, before the more recent one opened in New York, it was the world's largest LEGO store in Leicester Square. And they also have a full-on Legoland, which I actually just did a completely different video for, so I won't be dwelling too much time on the Legoland part of things. And beyond that, there's a lot of just small opportunities to get LEGO at pretty much just every random stop. And that is in the form of these fantastic LEGO magazines. Now I actually will be putting out a separate video on just the LEGO magazines themselves, so I will go a lot more in depth into them in that video, but honestly, now is probably the best time to just get started because the magazines are what's gonna greet you the moment you enter the UK and pretty much any other European country, because they're sold literally everywhere. From the moment you enter the airport, the LEGO magazines will be greeting you at pretty much every single newsstand. In the UK, there's a store called WH Smith, which is very, very common. You see it basically everywhere, and it's kind of a magazine shop, snack shop, somewhat souvenir shop, just very, very common to the UK, and they always have these specialized LEGO magazines. So the way these magazines work is that LEGO essentially does them for their most popular themes. They do it for all their original LEGO themes, which right now is basically just Ninja Jago City and Friends, they used to do it for Hidden Side, Shima, Nexo Knights, and yeah, even Bionicle got two issues back in the day, but they also have them for the licensed themes. So they have DC and Marvel, as well as Star Wars, of course, and one LEGO quote-unquote Explorer magazine, which is kind of just like Creator, it really just tries to be an educational magazine, but all of these come together, and they have a very, very wide selection of different types of reading material for any LEGO fan. But of course, it's not just the magazines that make these special, because every single magazine comes with an exclusive build or minifigure, which is super fantastic, because a lot of times, these are the cheapest ways to get some of the rarest minifigures that only appear in some of the most expensive sets. Just take this year, for example, we are getting Ronin, who only appears in the massive Ninjago City Garden set, in a full-fledged magazine. That's pretty crazy to me because if you didn't actually buy the Ninjago City Garden set, which retails for hundreds of dollars, you wouldn't be able to get this minifigure whatsoever. In the US, you can't even get him off of bricks and pieces. So the magazine is a great way to get him and another minifigure packaged with him for literally five to six US dollars. And that's not all. Even one of the other magazines has the Seabound version of Scuba Nia, who only appears in the $130 Hydro Bounty, among many, many other examples. And this isn't just a recent thing, because the magazines have been responsible for the cost of Ninjago minifigures on the aftermarket plummeting in value because thankfully they're including the rarest figures in almost all the cheapest magazines. So I personally am very happy they're doing this. It allows kids to have a chance to get the characters they want without having to shell out for the most expensive sets. And man, Lego, what are these coming to the US? And it's not just Ninjago as well. Even Star Wars has a lot of really great stuff, although Star Wars does tend to focus more on the buildable spacecraft and mini builds, which means you're getting a lot more bang for your buck in terms of price per piece because you're actually getting some pretty substantial models with them. But that also means that a lot of the minifigures just are not included in the Star Wars magazines. You might get a Luke or a Stormtrooper once in a while, but mostly they're just going to be builds. 
Jurassic World is pretty split. Unfortunately, they do not include any full-fledged dinosaurs in them. You'll get lucky if you get an egg or a baby raptor. They do really like to use that baby raptor mold in the Jurassic World magazine, so it's a bit of a hit or miss. But then you get DC on the other hand, and Marvel, which has pretty much the same selection, where almost every single DC or Marvel minifigure, at least from the comic side of things, is going to be represented in these magazines, which again, is a great way to get some of the rarest figures. The magazines, also the other thing I have to say is that I really do love the way these are distributed, because almost every single store that you go to in the UK, and also just in Europe in general, will be selling these magazines. You can go into literally any random grocery, and you're almost guaranteed to 100% see these magazines being sold. And it's not just groceries. Literal random newsstands on the street are almost always typically selling magazines like these, and you can't really go somewhere without seeing them, which means that kids are very oversaturated with LEGO. Everywhere they look, there is a cheap way to get exposed to LEGO, to get advertised to the newest LEGO brands, the newest LEGO themes, and get a chance to play with some of the minifigures of their own. To me, this is a great way for getting kids interested in LEGO at a much smaller price point. You get a full magazine explaining the lore and story of a particular year, but also it comes with a little LEGO toy to play with, which hopefully spurs them to actually go out and buy some of the larger LEGO sets. So I think it's a fantastic marketing decision to have these, and I don't know why these are only in Europe. LEGO, funnily enough, did try to release these in the US, but in my opinion, the distribution strategy for this was really not that great. They only released them in Barnes & Noble bookstores, which are pretty niche bookstores. You only go to the bookstores if you're actually intending to buy books, which is great if you actually just wanted to get the books yourselves, but it's not like they released them in any grocery stores or regular newsstands on the street, so people just simply weren't exposed to it, and as a result, after only one Ninjago magazine issue in the US, they eventually just pulled out any plans to sell them in the US and only sell them in Europe, which in my opinion is a big shame because there's a lot of potential to be gotten out of these. But moving on from the magazines themselves, which we've already spent more than enough time on given I'm doing a completely separate video on these, it's probably time to actually move on to the larger LEGO themed stores themselves. So we're going to end this video with the largest LEGO stores, so let's just take a look at some of the other stores first. For example, one of my favorite experiences in the UK was visiting this John Lewis department store. So in case you aren't aware, John Lewis is kind of just this department and clothing store. It does have a food hall in the basement where you can get some food at, but for the most part, by and large, this is just a store selling clothing. If you're located in the US, think of it as maybe like a Nordstrom's or something. I don't know, there isn't really a good comparable estimate, at least a one-to-one -one comparison from this to the US, but it's basically just kind of a standard clothing store, except it has a full Lego selection. And what's really great about stores like these is that people don't often go to John Lewis to buy Lego. No one actually goes into a department store like this with the intention of buying Lego. I mean, you're going to be going to get the clothing or the food or something, and the Lego is just kind of there as an extra. Unless you're me, because I absolutely was going in here to buy Lego, because I absolutely was going in here to buy Lego, and who boy, was I not disappointed. We'll be getting to the haul at the end of this video, but this John Lewis had a lot of really fantastic old retired sets that I personally just missed out on, namely Lego Technic. So Lego Technic is a theme I really only recently started to collect. Nowadays, I try to collect almost every single large flagship Lego Technic set, but back in the day, I really wasn't that big of a fan of Technic. So a lot of really fantastic gems just simply slipped by me and I didn't get a chance to buy them. But thankfully, I had a second chance because this John Lewis was stocked with not one, but two older, discontinued 2017 to 2018 era LEGO Technic sets, which are basically impossible to find anywhere else, particularly in the new and sealed condition. And again, we'll be getting into this on the haul, but I walked away from this John Lewis store a very, very happy man with two of the largest older LEGO Technic sets fully secured. One other thing that I found kind of interesting is that it wasn't just LEGO Technic that they had older sets of. Even Star Wars had a set from 2017, which was from the Rathtar Escape stuff, which was released around the Rogue One sets. Kind of a shock to still see that on shelves, but yeah, they still had it right there prominently displayed, and it is still there at the time I published this video, because of course I already did own that set. So it was just interesting seeing this. And that's not even the best of it, because of course it's really cool to find discontinued sets here and there, but honestly, you can go to Bricklink for that. But what's really cool is just seeing the sheer amount of unique LEGO sculptures decorating the store, and that's not something you normally see in the US. 
Maybe if you go into a dedicated LEGO store, you might get lucky and see one large-scale LEGO sculpture. But here, they were in almost every single department store, and that was really awesome. For instance, just adorning the shelves here, you can see a lot of fun decorations, like these pigeons typing on a computer. I've got a picture of my duck mascot for duck bricks alongside these, of course. And you even have theme-specific builds. So you have this large-scale sculpture of a hidden side build, literally just tucked away in the corner because hidden sides discontinued. I don't know what's going to happen to this after a few years, but it was really interesting to see this. The ghost made of fully transparent green pieces, so just awesome to see this. And this one was tucked away, because in the rest of the store, you can actually see all sorts of LEGO themed large builds and fun interactive activities. For instance, they have this large brick built 18 plus LEGO shoe build. It's just a full large scale recreation of the official 18 plus set, which is really awesome to see. Kind of cool to see a full scale LEGO build like this. And right behind it was a full on interactive display for LEGO stunts, which unfortunately did not have any of these stunt sets on them because of LEGO's distribution issues and their kind of short term packaging losses. And they also had a massive widescreen display display for LEGO video of all things. I guess they didn't get the memo that video is kind of dead, but they were still advertising it. And all around the store, there were interactive activities to play around with LEGO. And keep in mind, again, this is not even a dedicated LEGO store. This is literally just a random clothing and department store. And they still had all of these crazy experiences for LEGO. When I took the train to a different branch of John Lewis, I saw even more interesting finds. At this other branch of John Lewis, I found a lot of pretty discontinued LEGO sets. The oldest of which being a set from the final wave of LEGO Nexo Knights, Aaron's Expo, which is pretty rare to see nowadays. It's actually very, very uncommon, especially because the shelf life for these sets was very, very short lived. So kind of interesting to see that. Obviously I already owned it, so I did not purchase it myself, but it's always cool to see an older set for sale. One thing I did purchase was actually one of the Unikitty sets from here that I did not own yet. But as you can see, they had a lot of other stuff as well, including some of the stuff from the final wave of Hidden Side, which is very, very rare to see nowadays, as well as even some stuff from the Lego Movie 2. So, of course, a lot of the John Lewises are packed with older Lego sets, and what's even cooler is that even these smaller branches of John Lewis have large-scale Lego sculptures, like this policeman, which you can see right here. But now is probably a good time to move away from the John Lewis department stores and take a look at another massive department store, which is, of course, the famous Harrods in the UK. So for those of you who aren't aware, Harrods is one of the largest department stores pretty much ever. And this one is known for having a selection of basically everything you can think of, from food to clothing to supplies to books to magazines to, of course, you guessed it, Lego sets. So Harrods has a really great selection, although unfortunately there isn't really anything rare to buy at Harrods. I personally did not find really anything out of the ordinary or something that I normally wouldn't see elsewhere, but honestly the presentation of the Lego aisle was good enough for me just to enjoy as simply a Lego aisle itself and kind of just not worry about having to buy anything. You see at Harrods there were a lot of unique Lego themed displays featured all around the store including of course a massive dedicated section for specifically Harry Potter which was in a whole Harry Potter themed wing of itself but had a large scale buildable Lego Harry Potter minifigure. Now one thing I kind of remember fondly is that years ago when I was originally visiting the UK, I think around even it was still there up to 2015-2016, they had one of the older LEGO Harry Potter sculptures of Hagrid and Harry Potter from 2001 with full on yellow skin and a more humanoid appearance, but unfortunately there is no trace of those and they have been replaced by the newer version of Harry Potter, which does make sense, but it still was always nice to see a somewhat nostalgic look at what LEGO once was, especially because that sculpture sculpture from 2001 stayed in Harrods for the longest time. And so, after a bit of afternoon tea at Harrods, the next stop was checking out the largest toy store in the UK, which is Hamleys. Now Hamleys is a specialty toy shop in the UK that specializes in pretty much every single type of toy. And of course, the top floor was dedicated to a massive Lego section. And this was very, very extensive. Not only did it feature basically literally every single set you can buy on the market today, but it also had a few older sets like the Hidden Side Train, which is actually quite a good set, but most importantly it had a lot of Lego sculptures. So arguably one of the most famous Hamley sculptures is the sculpture of the Queen here. This has been here for years and years and you can really see it in full detail. A very nice sculpture to actually experience yourself, so it's always really interesting to see that. But even beyond just this one thing, Hamley's had a whole host of 
of other different displays for LEGO that was really interesting to see and experience for myself. So obviously, as you can see, as we're going around the store here, they had a fantastic spread of different sets and different stuff for displays like this video llama right here, which is kind of funny seeing a large brick built version of that, a sculpture for the Lego Movie 2, which also is quite outdated, but also some large scale stuff that even debuted in 2015 for The Force Awakens, like this large sculpture of Rey, and one from even before that, which is the Star Wars Micro Fighters sculpture here, featuring the Snowspeeder from 2014. So that one's been around for a while. They also have the Hamleys Royal Guards around here. And what's also really cool is that Hamleys has a regional exclusive minifigure to Hamleys itself. If you go to Hamleys, you can see this whole stand for Hamleys exclusive stuff. And they have a minifigure of a Royal Guard, which is a specific version made for Hamleys. That's actually selling for 650 pounds. Ooh, that's pretty rough because that translates to around eight US dollars. For one minifigure, that's not really good value. I guess it kind of makes sense for an exclusive to one particular toy shop in the UK, but still, I do wish that was a little bit cheaper. And don't worry, we'll be revisiting this particular Royal Guard later on in this video. But moving on, one of the other really cool things that Hamleys does is actually have a showcase of all of the most recent LEGO sets in a full glass cabinet. As you can see here, you can see sets from the Looney Tunes CMF to Marvel to architecture, all sorts of different stuff, all featuring just the latest LEGO builds. And this pretty much has almost everything you can see. So they've got Ninjago here too, or I guess Ninjago from 2020, which is kind of funny given how everything else is actually from this year. But of course they have Super Mario as well, Star Wars, Jurassic World, all of the newest sets all showcased in a glass cabinet to actually let kids have the chance to see what kinds of sets are there available on the shelves and which kind of stuff they want to get. Now, of course, these shelves are continuously updated, so they obviously are a rotating display here. But there are, of course, many things that are kind of perpetual favorites of Hamleys, like the Sherlock Holmes detective statue is always cool. They've got a BB-8 as well. All sorts of different large-scale Lego sculptures that really make this feel completely different and unique for any Lego aisle. So all sorts of interesting things, interesting setups they have going on for this particular Lego display. And it's overall always a treat to go and visit Hamleys, which has one of the world's largest selection of really any toys. One thing you do have to watch out for though is that prices at Hamleys are always a little bit more expensive than they actually are for retail, even for the UK when prices are already really expensive. Hamleys does have a bit of a Hamleys tax, so I would not recommend actually buying anything from here, but going for the experience and just going to see all the different fun LEGO displays certainly makes it worth its while. And with that, we can probably move on from Hamleys to our final LEGO themed destination. After stopping by a used LEGO store, which don't worry, we'll be dedicating a full extra video to, so I'm not going to go in depth whatsoever on this used LEGO store. We'll be getting to this in a future video, but after going to that, I actually got a chance to visit the second largest LEGO store in the world, the LEGO store Leicester Square. And who oh boy, was this a fantastic experience. Here we are in London in Leicester Square. This was once the largest Lego store in the world. Now there is one larger in New York, but this is now the second largest store. Let's go inside and take a look. At Unlike the Lego store in New York, which pretty much is a very big store, but doesn't really have anything necessarily exclusive to New York as a location, the Lego Leicester Square store has a lot of specific London exclusives and specific exclusives to this particular store only. As you can see here, lining the checkout counters are all of these statues of Royal Royal Guards, the miniature LEGO London bus, which actually only appeared as what I believe was a free gift back in the day when the large creator expert London bus came out, but you can't really find that in the States anymore. They also have the specialized keychains of the LEGO London mascot, Lester. You can see him right here. He actually can be bought as an exclusive minifigure as well, but they have his keychain, they have his face on notebooks, they have him on magnets all sorts of different things. And what's also really cool is that they even have t-shirts. So yeah, you can get a t-shirt from this store that specifically says it is from the Lego store Leicester Square, which is one of the only occasions an official Lego store is selling merchandise that advertises a specific location. As you can see here, you can get individual poly bags of the Leicester minifigure, which thankfully are priced very well. But the biggest surprise to me was the prices for these Royal Guard minifigures. So as you can see, there are three packs of Royal Guards. These are the exact same minifigures you will pay 650 pounds for, all the way back over at Hamley's, and they are charging 499 pounds for three of them. 
literally identical. There is no difference. The Hamleys one is not differentiated in any way. But these ones are so cheap. And they're way cheaper than the three packs of minifigures in the US. And that's the other thing that kind of got me. In the US, we have these build a minifigure stations. They cost $10. You can buy three minifigures with them. And they cost, again, they, they cost $10. But the three minifigure packs here cost five pounds, which is like six to seven dollars. So it absolutely was so much cheaper to get the minifigures here versus in the US, which rarely ever is the case. It almost always is that it's more expensive to buy things in the UK versus the US, but apparently not for the minifigure three packs. Five pounds for three minifigures is probably the best deal you're going to get on any minifigure, given the collectible minifigures are four pounds. So I mean, they're not really that much different and you're getting three minifigures instead of one. And what's even easier is that they actually made it very easy to collect these specific store exclusive collectible minifigure type things from the build a minifigure stations. So in case you aren't aware, LEGO is actually doing this thing. They started this, I think, around two years ago, where the build a minifigure stations at LEGO stores have exclusive prints, exclusive recolors, exclusive dual moldings, all sorts of specialized parts that you cannot find in any official LEGO set. Most of these parts do not actually appear in any official set, but only appear in the build a minifigure tables. This has given us some amazing things like flower costumes in different colors, all sorts of seasonal things like winter-themed minifigures, a recolor of the 2x3 brick outfit in teal, all sorts of crazy hair recolors like the J hair recolor in dark orange, which actually fits the appearance in the Ninjago TV show better than the actual hair piece, all sorts of really great pieces, and they're all exclusive to the LEGO build a minifig stations. Now, in the US, the parts are just kind of dumped in there, so you kind of have to hunt for them. You never really know exactly what LEGO was going for with the minifigures. But in the UK, they actually literally had a palette where you could choose specific minifigures from this menu. You can see all the minifigures in the menu and get whichever ones you wanted. So essentially what I asked for is I said, can I get one of literally everything? Because it was only 499 pounds, which is kind of a steal compared to the US. And in the US, I would actually have to go through, dig through the pieces and figure out, well, what was LEGO trying to come up with for this particular character? It's not like they release official images of these, so you kind of have to guess which one they were trying to go with, what parts match up with what. So this was absolutely the easiest way to get this very diverse and rare selection of minifigures at the cheapest possible price. And so I am very, very happy they did this. And I definitely walked away from the store with all of these specialized Lego minifigures from at least the past year. The other thing that was very special to the Lego Leicester Square Lego store, which is something you can see at other stores, but it is pretty special and did have some exclusive prints, is the Print a Minifigure Station. Now I have dedicated a few standalone videos to this station, namely reprinting a Star Wars minifigure torso in excellent detail, line by line to get it printed on a Lego torso, but the way this works is that you can actually design your own Lego minifigure torso on one of the screens in the store. And after you design it, they actually have these exclusive stickers and prints that you can put on it. You can send it off to the printer and print your own Lego minifigure fully customized on the front and the back of the torso, which I think is really cool. And I definitely was able to get a ton of them. I tried to get enough to maximize the different kinds of print combinations because for all intents and purposes, these are exclusive prints to this particular location. So I absolutely wanted to max out my value here. Aside from this minifigure customization experience, they also had a mosaic maker booth, which I already have done before, so there was no need for me to do it again, but it is cool to see the Lego mosaic maker as an actual feature in this particular store. And who boy, we are not done yet, because there's still a lot of really interesting things you can see at the store that are exclusive to this store itself. So beyond all the purchasing experiences and stuff you can buy, they had a lot of large scale Lego sculptures, way more than you'd see in any standard Lego store. And they were all London themed. So you can see right here, one of my favorites is this large brick built subway car. It's actually fully scaled to be the same size as one of the actual subway cars that you can see in London itself. Of course, William Shakespeare and a Royal Guard are riding it, which makes total sense, but I do love this large scale recreation. You can also see alongside it, they actually have a subway map, which is brick built, as well as a whole host of other brick built stuff, like a massive Big Ben tower. This is literally larger than the ones you'll see at the Legolands. It's a massive, massive scale with a Westminster sign, all sorts of UK themed minifigures, and a large 3D mosaic of London itself 
which looks really beautiful. And man, I would love to have something like this in my house because this is a beautiful piece of artwork. It almost doesn't look like Lego until you get up and close and realize that, yeah, this is actually just all brick built, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, they have Lego's Legoland mascot, Ollie the Dragon, with a bit of a UK twist, wearing a bowler hat with an umbrella grasp in his mouth and a bit of a monocle as well. So kind of funny to see that here in particular, a very special thing for the UK. And it is one of the largest Lego models you'll ever see at any Lego store. All in all, the experience at this particular Lego store is unlike any that I've seen in any Lego store around the world. Maybe the New York one comes close, but this one really replicates the authentic UK and London feel. There's all sorts of exclusive things that you can get from here, which is really amazing to see. And I definitely will be dedicating a lot of extra videos to this trip because there's still a whole lot I did not talk about. Because I haven't even mentioned their amazing pick-a-brick wall, which has some fantastic exclusive and rare pieces to it. We'll be dedicating another video to that, so stay tuned. There's a lot we have to get into. So that was the LEGO Store Leicester Square. All sorts of exclusive LEGO items specifically for the UK. Absolutely fantastic customer experience. And now is probably just a good time to start to wrap up this video because... All in all, throughout my trip to the UK, I realized just how lucky people living here actually have it when it comes to LEGO shopping. You see, in the US, we don't really have a lot of these experiences. You can walk into a department store with a LEGO aisle in the US, but you'll probably get lucky if there even is a LEGO aisle, and most department stores definitely will not have the kind of decorations that pretty much every other department store in the UK had, that's for sure. Even the LEGO stores themselves were a lot more special in terms of making them themed to a specific location. General toy stores like Hamley's had UK-specific LEGO builds. Of course, the Leicester Square LEGO store was absolutely covered with LEGO UK-exclusive stuff. And even Harrods and Hamley's had their own special things as well. All in all, this was a fantastic experience, bolstered by the fact that you can walk into any store. It doesn't have to be a LEGO-themed store, literally just any store and you can absolutely find something related to LEGO inside, some sort of entry-level magazine that will get kids hooked on the brick. And that is something I do feel like other regions of the world are missing. It's something to pull kids in, especially when there's just so much oversaturation of all sorts of different toys and brands out there. The magazines are a great way to get kids reinterested in LEGO to continue their interest and are just simply really good deals for adult fans of LEGO like me who just want to get them for the rare minifigures cheap. And with that, we have summed up our look at the many UK LEGO shopping experiences. And now, of course, as it is customary with all videos like these, it is time for the haul. The first couple of sets I had to get that are very distinctly UK are some of the ones that released just this year. You can see pictured at the front was the 2017 Green Creator Dino, but down here are two different recolors. This is actually a recolor pilot that LEGO launched only in the UK, featuring older sets but colored in different sorts of strange colors that it didn't actually originally come in. And so for instance you can see the original Green Creator Dinosaur from 2017, a dark blue version in sand blue, as well as a dark orange in brown. I do actually hope that LEGO does continue this. I think there's a lot of potential in recoloring older sets and exposing them to a newer audience. And I just find it very interesting that LEGO actually did this. I actually went ahead and bought the green set for the first time because of this. And that's not all, because they actually did it for one larger set as well. This right here is the LEGO Creator Fiat 500 car. This originally released in the brick yellow or bright yellow color. And this time it's been pretty much remade in an all new blue color. Even the sticker sheet got an upgrade showcasing the car in the actual color it appears in for the set, and this was very notable for actually releasing a ton of new parts in this particular shade of blue. You see the original actually introduced a lot of new parts in the cool yellow color, and now we have basically a lot of those same parts being released in this shade of blue for the first time pretty much ever. One thing they also did on this set was actually update the stickers on the back of the trunk here, which I just find interesting. They did a little bit of difference in terms of changing the graphics of the model, but pretty much everything else just stayed the same. This is an identical build to the actual older set. It's just something in a completely new color, which again is a strange choice for LEGO to do for something like this, but honestly it works out well. The set is actually a deceptively complicated build. It was built by one of the engineering legends at LEGO, Mike Siaki, so this is absolutely a treat of a creator expert car. And with that, let's move on to the next build. 
So this set right here is just kind of a smaller seasonal set. I just haven't seen it pop up in US stores yet. I think it's sold out on Shop at Home, so I just figured I'd pick it up just for fun. There's nothing really too crazy going on, just kind of a nice winter seasonal snow scene. LEGO does tend to kind of rotate their seasonal releases from year to year, so this just happens to be the theme they're going for this year, which is some sort of a snowy vignette. They've done these for Halloween this year and other sorts of different seasons, so I just wanted to complete my collection of kind of random seasonal LEGO Lego stuff. I do kind of like the function here with this ramp that people can slide down whether on skis or on the snowmobile and of course I actually do think that the build for this ice igloo wall is actually really good. It's Obviously, it's very simple, but it does really get the job done and honestly, that's all you can really expect or want from a small seasonal set like this. So moving on from this set, the next one up here was one from the LEGO Unikitty theme, which honestly did not perform too too well. I did not even buy all the sets when they first came out, but this one I just felt like I didn't own it yet. It does have some fun prints with these sports themed wheels and different sorts of fun characters. Everything you see here that's a decal is fully printed, so I figured why not. This is Prince Puppycorn's Trike. It's a very, very small, essentially $10 set. I think I paid around seven pounds for it in the UK, so that translates pretty well. Just a nice vehicle. I do like the printed wheels here, and it also came with an extra print for the baseball styled wheel. And it also has these other fun characters, I'm not really sure exactly what the story is behind them but it just has a lot of little interesting things to play around with and is kind of just a nice charming little lego set so you can see this here again nothing too too much i can actually say about this other than it is a fun charming and nice build and i do wish that some more original stuff like this comes out of lego in the future but with that we can move on to one of the next things so this right here is the special custom printed box I got from Legoland Winsor. I talk about this a little bit more in my Legoland Winsor video, but inside it are actually a lot of the exclusive build a minifigure tower figures, which I mentioned earlier in this video. I was able to get all of the official combinations of from the Lego store directly thanks to their amazing menu. So let's just take a look at all these right now. After lining them all up, you can see some excellent prints. Almost all of these are different prints or recolors, especially if you don't see things you recognize. Even for the Halloween stuff, a lot of this stuff is just brand new. Stuff like the little minifigure in the tiger outfit is fully new and printed. Even the chef has excellent dual molded white and black boots. Those are fantastic for Admiral Thrawn minifigures from Star Wars. And especially the fantasy stuff is really cool, like the Ice King. Even some other stuff here, like just some random civilian things. There's that J hair that I mentioned earlier in the accurate dark orange color, a blue face for whatever reason, and as well as a purple turban. We got some witches and whatnot, again recolors of dual molded pieces, all sorts of very useful things, especially that little pig as well, and pretty much just stuff that you can only find at the build a minifigure towers. Some stuff that really stands out to me are especially stuff that I can actually use for other Lego stuff, like the historical or fantasy like figures, but all in all it's really interesting, it's almost like a miniature CMF series series all on its own with all exclusive prints just for a build a minifigure. And speaking of build a minifig, here's basically all the parts I was actually able to get from the Lego stores throughout my entire trip to the UK. Now I've thrown a few extra pieces here and there from other minifig accessories. So this isn't everything from the UK, but this is pretty much the large bulk of things I was able to actually get from the minifig walls, plus a couple of bricks and pieces orders here and there, but I probably will just wanna call out a few interesting things here. You'll immediately notice a lot of Lego pigs. It is one of the cheapest farm animals to get, but you definitely cannot get them in bulk so I just filled up a lot of containers of the build a minifig pieces with the pigs and pretty much any other animal I could find you can see some geckos some chickens even a penguin here and there some snakes all sorts of different Lego animals which I always love to get again here is a closer look at the particular pig piece just a really cute and charming little animal always good to get a ton of multiples of these and you can also see other animals. This teal gecko actually did appear in one of the Lego modular buildings, so the coloration is not new, but you really cannot get it in bulk unless you actually get it from bricks and pieces, so that's why I actually got it from the build a minifigure towers here, which is a lot cheaper than buying it from bricks and pieces for sure. Now these dual molded legs here are really excellent because you can use them for Lego Batman figures. The dark gray with the black really works well and the same goes for the bulk pieces I got for these dual molded legs, which you can use for Captain America with dark brown boots especially, those work really well. 
And these, as I mentioned before, are really great for Star Wars admirals and officers. I just wanted to get a ton of them because it's just a very useful piece. Always cool to get different dual molded elements. And you can see a lot more dual molding here and there. Even some like woody legs with the blue and brown. Some shark heads in a special color that's actually a different color than the actual shark head came in. And all in all, just interesting pieces that you really won't find anywhere else. Because again, the vast majority of these are again exclusive to the build a minifigure towers. So overall, just a fantastic selection. I would highly recommend checking them out at your local LEGO store because there's always new gems coming out pretty much every month. And then finally, we can wrap this haul up by taking a look at the two Technic sets that I got from the UK, plus an extra one you can see up here I've also mounted on the wall. This one was from the used LEGO store, so we'll be dedicating a different video to that. So let's just start things off with these two right here. This is the Volvo Concept Loader. It actually has a lot of high-tech features. Of course, you got the steering, but there's actually a few extra added on details here. You can see twisting the gears on the side can allow you to actually articulate the movement and positioning of this front boom or crane here almost in every single direction you would expect. So it is a really cool build to have from 2017. So again, not something you see every day. Once I actually take it off the wall here, you can see one of the extra features here is twisting this side gear to elevate the positioning of the back which again is kind of an interesting feature and the way this was built actually forces you to build them almost completely separately and then mesh the two halves of the build together to allow you to really just get in there and change the steep angle and articulation of this model you can see this pretty radically changes the silhouette of the model. You even have to adjust the front scoop there to actually accommodate this, which is exactly what it's for because it allows you to get at different angles and presumably dig through either buckets of Lego pieces or imaginary dirt as you're playing with this model. Now, of course, twisting different gears allow you to articulate the boom as I just demonstrated, but that's actually not all because there are a ton more things you can do with this, such as articulating the positioning of the final thing. Of course, you can steer it around. Very, very satisfying to roll around with these large tire elements, and you can actually control it from either side. So there's a gear on this side to also control the backwards elevation here. And as we move onwards to the back here, you can actually see some other additional features for this model. It does have a little cute drone here built out of just standard Lego Technic pieces, but nice to see kind of a drone because it simplifies some stuff they're planning on doing in the future for the Volvo engineering. And this also has some sort of an AI camera or crane. I assume this is maybe meant to be autonomous. So it has that mounted up on the front there using the CCBS buildable figure action add-on pieces. Twisting the gear at the back here allows this module to interface with one of the pieces that was introduced for Ninjago Air Jitsu Battlegrounds, but it really works well in terms of moving the weight on the back. This is kind of a counterweight to juxtapose the weight of stuff that it would be scooping out. So obviously, it doesn't serve a functional purpose in the set. It's not like it actually needs a counterweight, but it's cool to actually have that. And of course, again, very satisfying full range of steering, so you can actually do quite a lot with it. And all in all, that basically sums up this particular model, an interesting concept design for a vehicle that doesn't quite exist in real life yet. And then moving on, we can take a look at the next build here, which I actually got because I held a poll on my Duckbricks Instagram, should I buy set number 42069? And yes, a lot of people voted yes, I think it was around 86%. And so here it is. From 2017, set number 42069, this is Extreme Adventures. It is kind of a snowmobile type vehicle. It has a pretty cool way of opening the door. It's fully spring-loaded, so you can see lifting this element up here is spring-loading the bottom piece on the door as well. LEGO Technic actually did this quite often back in the early 2000s, but it's pretty rare to see it nowadays. And what's really cool is that the full pistons inside do actually work when you roll it along because this uses the friction tread add-on pieces from the next so nice Fortrex set. So always interesting to see those appear here. It does have a winch at the front, which can be controlled by twisting gears at the back. And as we move alongside the back here, you can see the model from all sorts of different angles. Very purple and striking color scheme here, which is always really cool to see. All right, and that about sums up this explanation of just why I love shopping for LEGO in London so much. From the magazines in every store, to the large-scale models littered in almost every single department store, and even all the interactive activities at the official LEGO shops, and of course Legoland Windsor, there are a ton of things to do in London that are LEGO related, which is why I would definitely recommend any LEGO fan making a trip out if they can. 
Now there is, of course, one caveat to this, and it's something that I wanted to mention at the end of this video. Everything is amazing about shopping for LEGO in London, except for the prices of the LEGO themselves. You see, at least here in the US, we are kinda spoiled. Basically in the US, you'll find sets the cheapest that they'll be anywhere else in the world. You will not find LEGO cheaper anywhere other than the US, save for a few very minor examples. And it really hits it hard, especially in London, when you're using British pounds to compare LEGO prices. Even when looking at some of these smaller stuff, like let's say you've got a $20 US set over in the US, that set will probably be around 20 pounds if you're lucky, and that translates to around 25 US dollars. Now, sure, there are of course state taxes in the US and all sorts of nonsense that goes on, but really, it gets really bad when you get to more and more expensive sets. And there are some prices that just flat out don't make any sense. Just take a look at the recent Lego Technic Ford Raptor truck. This retails for 100 US dollars, but guess how much it retails in the UK? Yeah almost double the US price. It literally makes no sense, I don't know why LEGO does this, and honestly maybe they have to push marketing for LEGO so much in the UK because the prices are just so much more expensive. So really unfortunate if you live in the UK and are a big LEGO fan, you will be spending a lot more than the average LEGO fan, especially the average American LEGO fan, just because of how expensive the products are. Now, I do know that this is a lot worse in a lot of other countries. London is a lot better than many other places in the world, some of which don't even have official LEGO stores. There are some places in the world that shop at home doesn't ship to, and you have to kind of rely on your own toy retailers. Now, those, of course, are a lot worse, but for a country that has a big LEGO presence, has a LEGO land, has official LEGO stores, has a big LEGO fan base, the prices are not fantastic. But everything else though is truly amazing and I would highly, highly recommend going to London just if honestly to check out all of the different Lego related paraphernalia they have all around the country. You don't even need to buy anything other than maybe some magazines or whatnot which are only around six to eight dollars anyway. Just enjoy all of the Lego sites to see from Hamley's to the Lego store to even stuff like the John Lewis department store. There's just a lot of good stuff to see and that's why I truly love shopping for Lego in the UK. But that about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed this special look at a recent LEGO experience that I had. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and definitely stay tuned to Duck Breaks for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. And let me know down in the comments below if you like this kind of video, if you want to see more LEGO explorations in the real world, just let me know and I'll see what I can do, because I've got a few trips lined up and I definitely hunt for LEGO wherever I go. Until next time, bye bye for now.